Hey guys, JT Tran here. Now, Heather, let's talk about a serious subject, which is how do you tell if a guy's being creepy? What, what are the signals that say, this is a guy I should run away from? Um, well, let's just say like it's like a typical like approach thing, like maybe mm -hmm. we'll say in my club or something like that. Right. Um, first is like body language. Mm -hmm. um, that's like a huge thing. So if you're approaching a girl and you are not making eye contact, you're staring. Lack of eye contact, yeah. right. Who knows where you're staring, but you're staring somewhere else, maybe not at her, maybe at her too much, like, right. you know. You have to get the, the right amount of eye contact. Um, for me, I, I've noticed this uh, for myself as well as my Asian students. Like for the longest time, up until high school, I would not make eye contact with people. I'd like look down. It was only until college where I forced myself to make eye contact. And I see this also with a lot of Asians because it's kind of considered rude to, to make a lot of eye contact. So. It's in the Western world, you want to make good eye contact. You want to have, so, you know, have solid eye contact, smile. Um, you don't want to do it too much because if you're just like staring, <laughs> right? That's, then that becomes creepy. Like too little eye contact is creepy, but too much eye contact is creepy as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, here it is rude if you don't make eye contact at all. Right. So keep that in mind. Yeah, too much eye contact is a little too much, mm -hmm. but you have to do it. Right. So um, another thing is just um, like, body posture in general, I guess, like right. hold yourself high, be confident. If you're slouching in and you're not, you're not kind of like shuffling your hands in your pocket or your beers right here, <laughs> kind of has that defensive posture. Yeah. I mean, we react subconsciously. I think people in general do right. to someone else's body language. Well, we don't even realize it. And if you're making yourself smaller, well, then you're a small, you're small, like, you know, right. we're going to treat you as such. You know, instead of owning the room, being confident and just walking in there knowing that you can talk to this person, you know, I'm going to respond to that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, another thing I would say, and this especially afflicts Asian guys, but it's true for any guy is, and we touched on this briefly, the Asian poker face or the lack of facial expressions. Because you communicate on so many different levels with a woman. And the first thing she sees is your face, so you have to smile. But you don't want to smile too much because then it has a shit-eating grin. And like, ah, yeah, <laughs> like you know, you smile from the beginning so that you're disarming. Because if you don't have control of your facial expressions, you look creepy. You look like some serial killer guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe you don't intend to come off like that because you, being like Asian myself, we weren't really taught growing up to be facially expressive. But if this is a white girl or a black girl, she's going to be like, this guy is creepy. <laughs> One of the biggest signals. Like, if you're chilling at the bar and you're just staring at girls like, <laughs> That's just creepy. And you don't realize it, right? But it's like signaling the girl, run away. This guy has like a rape dungeon or something, okay? <laughs> um, other things, uh, like personal space. Sometimes, like, again, some Asians in different countries have a dis different concepts of personal space where it's a lot closer. Mm -hmm. Here in America, uh, it's like this bubble is like a couple feet like when you are getting that traction you can get closer But in the beginning you have to have like a couple couple of like a foot or two away And as the traction grows and get more intimate you can get closer mm -hmm. um, Yeah, don't start off the bat with just physical, you know Invasiveness, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have had guys approach me where they're like, you know I might be at a club and they immediately like just start like I don't know, dirty dancing. Like, what is that? <laughs> grinding. Yeah, grinding. <laughs> where, and I'm like, hold on, who is that? Like, I don't, I don't know you. Who are you? Like, let me at least see you. Like, say hi. Tell me your name. Something. Right. Like, don't just immediately start reaching for me. So, you know, you can be physically dominant without dominating her completely. Mm -hmm. um, so just respect the personal level. <laughs> right, right. I mean, again, it's about moderation, right? Uh, when it comes to like touching, you want to close that touch barrier. You want to like breach that touch barrier early on, but you don't want to get too touchy, right? <laughs> you don't want to get all like that, that touchy guy. Lingering. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, if you don't touch, 
she's going to think maybe there's something wrong with you, maybe there's something wrong with her, why aren't you being more physical? Because she does expect that. Again, as a guy, you're like, what are you saying? You're like, too much to live. It is about moderation. You want to throw some out there, but not too much, okay? Just the right amount. And there are safe places that are okay, like, you know, like a shoulder touch, like if she's talking to a friend or something mm -hmm. and you want to like, hey, talk to me. <laughs> right. Or like, um, you know, like even just clinking glasses or something like just random, like, hey, I'm in your, I'm, I'm here, I'm in your radar, I'm in your area, but I am not dominating over you. Right. Um, and another thing, this is very subtle, is the sound of a man's voice. <laughs> if you are in a club or a bar and she can barely hear you, I don't know, it, it seems kind of weird, but it, it, it shows that maybe not necessarily creepy, but you're nervous, mm -hmm. right? Or you have like a weird tonality. You got you got like pedophile voice or something <laughs> like that. Like, hey, little girl, <laughs> you got a pretty mouth, <laughs> right? I mean, it seems like um, an, an odd thing to point out, but a man's voice is important. Yeah, no, and you wouldn't realize this until a someone's pointed it out, mm -hmm. and b you've actually maybe heard yourself on recording or something. Yeah. Go, oh my god, that's what I sound like. So it's good to know what you sound like before you go out there. Right. Um, and what about facial hair? I know you've got a preference for facial hair. <laughs> I personally, I don't like it from, you know, just just generally I don't like it. I think right. some guys can rock it, but you actually have to shape it if you're gonna have it. Don't just let it grow and let it be free. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna wear it, you have to shave it, you have to shape it. Look on fashion blogs, do something. But don't yeah. just show that you're doing it on purpose, <laughs> right? It's not just something because you're lazy and you're dirty. It's okay if you have like a full man bear, but it needs to show that there is intent behind it and that you're not just some homeless person. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's a, I had a coworker who did have that full on man beard, right? But he's like, I condition it, you know, like he took care of it. Like, hey, that's cool. You know, at least it doesn't look like there's food in there from like three months ago. Right. <laughs> and here's another thing. That, um, when it comes to the hair, uh, the balding guys, because we see this all the time. I mean, balding is genetic. It's not a testament to your character as a man, but it is when you're trying to do like a little comb over and you're like, you're balding, guy. <laughs> Just shave it mm -hmm. or have a hat, but like you got to own it, okay? Um, again, balding is genetic. You can't do anything about it, but it does say something about who you are if you're trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes you feel like you're insecure, like you're something exactly. that's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm preoccupied with this and I'm hiding it. If you, I mean, I've dated a guy that shaved his head every day. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you can rock it. Yeah, it's just like facial hair. Uh, you need to own and you need to show intent that this is on purpose and people and women will respect the fact that you made that decision and you're owning it. Like, own it. Exactly. Now, now, what about neediness? Because neediness is a huge creepy factor, but there are different ways where a guy will express this creepy neediness. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you've like just in the club and you just met this girl, like you're just talking to her, and all of a sudden it's like you're getting way too clingy, way too, you know, you can't even go to the bathroom, like, I'm going to follow you to the bathroom, like, oh my god, like, get away, like, I'm calling all my friends from the stall, like, make sure he's, like, evicted from this place, like, <laughs> like, you need to position yourself accordingly where it is moderation, right. you know, don't, don't completely take over. <laughs> right, it's like, uh, him following you around, um, just kind of being clinging on you in an emotional and a physical level. Uh, you mentioned something that was interesting, like don't put, you know, he should not put you on a pedestal. Like explain that for those guys who don't quite get it. Um, so we had touched this on a different video where you like to humanize each other, mm -hmm. where you're equals. Um, often I will get approached um, where the guy will come up to me like, you know, wow, you're really pretty. Like, okay, well, thank you. And then continue to say like, yeah, no, you're just really beautiful. Like, I just, you know, I think you're so gorgeous. And it's like, okay, thank you. Like, we need to talk like about other things because this, I don't like this feeling of just, this is, we've already said this. <laughs> yeah, and what's happening for the you guys who don't understand is 
That direct opener, it works because it's, it's powerful, she's complimented, it's like she appreciates that. But here's what's happening when you continue to do that, is she feels being like you're objectifying her beauty, her physical attributes, and that's all you care about. You don't care about her as a person. So you're putting her as this sort of inhuman, like perfect idol, like up here that no person can match. And you're only interested in her physicality, not her personality, not who she is as a human being. And so that will come off as needy. Mm -hmm. um, what about weird topics? <laughs> like, what should a guy avoid? Other than the traditional, what, the, what they could say, um, you should avoid uh, religion, politics, and death. Uh, yeah. <laughs> obviously, obviously bad topics to talk about, but, but what else gives off like the creepy alert signal? Um, well, don't bring your mom into the conversation. <laughs> don't bring your mom. Like, I know there's some Asian mama's voice, so don't bring your mom into the conversation. <laughs> like, I mean, there's there's a time and place for speaking about mom's parents. It's not the first conversation yeah. you ever have with a girl. Um, don't bring up like past girlfriends or other Okay, girls. avoid exes. Yeah, because I don't, I don't need you to compare me to somebody else. I thought you were thinking about me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't go into just like random things that are not even relevant to what's happening. Like, you know, you don't really need to tell me about like that awesome breakfast place that you went to like seven years ago. Like, <laughs> you know, if that doesn't even pertain to what we were just discussing. Right, right. Because um, it's a weird transition to this really, randomness. Like, unless you can somehow play off a weird transition, no. but I mean, it's just not. And gotcha. then like maybe inside humor, like inside jokes, like if you know that's funny between you and your friends, but it may not be able to translate easily into like these situations, like don't do it. <laughs> right, right. Um, sex is something that you, you want to be sexualized, but some guys just, you take it too far, mm -hmm. right? They yeah. take it too far. Um, what other kind of weird topic? Like, what about like weird hobbies? Weird hobbies. Oh. Like, do you tell a girl like, "Hey, I like to cosplay," <laughs> or "I'm big into RPGs," or? Well, yeah. if you're at an anime convention or whatever, sure, right? Yeah. You're in a nightclub. Don't bring out the costumes. Like, just. Leave Keep that. your costumes and your fur <laughs> costumes in the closet. <laughs> right? There's a time and place and that's not it. Um, yeah, there are, I mean, there's con what's considered socially acceptable hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, anything athletic really is okay, but don't bring out like stamp collecting or something. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're not saying hide who you are, but there is a time and place. If you are this person and these are you're passionate about, I mean, that's great, but in the very beginning, when you're still getting to know one another, you want to avoid what we call TMI, too much information. When you are just flooding her with TMI, like too much, it's going to creep her out, it's going to weird her out. So you have to, instead of a flood, like a trickle, so that she can slowly absorb who you are. Like you got to keep some things in the back and, and reveal it over time. <laughs> Um, but speaking of which, I think this also pertains to this topic is when you're talking, you want to avoid the insecurities that you feel. Now, we are all insecure, every single one of us. There's no one, there's no person in the world that is 100% confident no matter what, who you think they are. All right, we all have like these deep, you know, insecurities that we work with and that's just the condition of being a human being. But when you're talking, you get to know her, like you don't need to tell her everything. It's good to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. and that shows you're not full of like you know a, a braggart or anything like that. But you can't tell her like you have like um, deep seated cheating issues or racial insecurities or like you go on. I'm sure you met like these Asian guys of like oh, why don't like white girls like Asian guys, like they just go on a rant, right? Like she understands all the issues. She's like she studied like race and all that um, a lot, but you, you don't you don't reveal everything in the beginning, all right? I mean, this person doesn't this person doesn't know you. This person mm -hmm. doesn't know who you are. And literally, her first impression of you is going to be that you are angry or that you are scared or mm -hmm. that you are embarrassed. Like. I don't want to be with a, an embarrassed, scared, angry person. I want to be with a confident, happy, fun person. You know, and I will learn down the line if this goes somewhere. I'll learn down the line, like, 
Yeah. You, know, you have certain insecurities and we can work on them together like because that's what you would do in a relationship. Very first day, don't tell me these things. <laughs> you want to show vulnerability, but like save, you know, save like the, all the information later on and you can grow into it and so that she accepts you. Right? Any other any other creepy signals so, uh, that a guy should watch out for to make sure that he doesn't he doesn't give off that signal? Um, I would just say there's also a graceful exit. Um, okay. I, I mean, no one likes to talk about, okay, you've just been rejected, right? Yeah, it always sucks, but it happens. <laughs> but. Um, don't make an, oh, he was nice, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that too. I was right, that guy was a fucking weirdo. Like, um, I think I was telling you how this guy, you know, he'd approached me and he was like, you know, my lady is just like talking, like, <laughs> you know, good day. You know, you are absolutely beautiful, and I'm like, oh, you're you're totally you're like some sort of like Renaissance yes, player, something like that. <laughs> and I mean, I I I've worked so long with you that I appreciated him approaching because that takes guts. And I just said, you mm -hmm. know, hey, I'm really sorry. You know, I, I'm seeing somebody, but you know, you know, thank you. And he said, well, I could. Uh, dress up as a girl and be one of your female friends and I even do the falsetto voice and I was like, no, this is now awkward. <laughs> Anyone save me for the love of God. And right. you know, he just kept going. It was just, there was a graceful exit, you know, take, you know, just say like, hey, take it as flattery and we'll try it. Yeah. In this particular case, he was acting whatever um, and kind of taking it overboard. Some guys will also go the other route throughout the opposite where they'll get angry you know and yes it sucks to be rejected but that's that's what it means to be a man you know that it is what it is and I would say just have a graceful exit to say pleasure meeting you if it worked you know if it didn't work out and she politely just you know says she's not interested gracefully exit even if she's being rude just say it was a pleasure meeting you. That's it. There's no need to to carry on like negative energy, all right? Because you are trying to be a better person, a better man. And yes, it sucks being rejected, but there's no need to to project your own feeling of anger onto other people because you did approach her, and you should not have expect to have this right that every girl has to give you her number. Mm -hmm. Like you're a man, that's your job to try, but it's also her duty to say yes or no. If she says yes or no, that's it. Okay, just say pleasure meeting you. You know, I actually have a story with that where mm -hmm. this guy had asked me out. It was during the day; it wasn't like a nightclub or anything. Right. And I had little experience being approached in public, so I immediately just was like, no, like, because I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, it was so scary. And I just said, no, and he was like, oh, well, you know, thank you anyway. I saw him again at a store, and he asked again, and I said yes that time. Oh. But I would not have said yes if he had been a dick. <laughs> right, right. He, he carried himself of class. I had remembered him, and I thought, you know what, he was really nice. I should give him a chance. Oh, that's so. cool. I'm glad, I'm glad that you did that. I'm glad that you gave him a chance. Well, he had a graceful exit. He wasn't a douchebag. So. Nice, nice. Don't be a douchebag, guys. <laughs> um, any last words for, about being creepy? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you can tell, okay? Maybe it's hard sometimes if, you, you know, if you're not used to the signals, but you can fix creepy so that you're cool, normal guy. If you need help, ask your friends. But the thing is like your friends have to be brutally honest because sometimes you're not gonna realize you're doing certain things that are coming off as creepy and it might, you know, be a little upsetting. But that's also why I coach and because we are here to tell you the brutally honest truth so that you can be more confident and that women see that confidence and are attracted to you. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe. Check out next video and uh, thanks. Bye. Have you dated white girls? I dated them briefly, didn't really like it. I've never dated Asian actually. It was kind of hard in the beginning and uh, I, I just feel, I don't know what to say. I've been with white girls. Huh. Why is it that other Asian men have a harder time dating outside of their race? I don't know, but it sucks for them. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this is Isabel D.